your space. So you do it as a grant. Um, you, you apply by putting down, putting pen to paper to explain what you are able to do, what you wish to do, the timelines, the budget, and submit. Uh, so you have to understand their call. So this is an application that involves procedures and they are frequently denoted as grant submissions of proposal. So sometimes it has timing. Some organizations announce their call only once in a year, some once in two years, some maybe twice in a year. So you have to find the periodicity of, the, of that call and study the proposals very well, study past proposals, and then position yourself to apply. And you have to prepare ahead. You don't just rush into submission. You have to prepare ahead. Give yourself ample time to sit down and distill your thoughts and see the full picture. So transmanship, the way we use postmanship, so it's a lifestyle. So begin by the time you begin to win one grant, two grants, three grants, you're already building a pedigree to make sure to, um, to make people refer to you that this is a good person that wins uh, grants, however small. So it's better to have a uh, history of how many grants you have handled before successfully. So if you are able to undo a small grant successfully, then you can capitalize on that. So it's a practice and art of acquiring financial grants. So it, it becomes a lifestyle. Once you start, you don't want to stop. You want to maintain that. You want to sustain it. You want to make it sustainable. You don't want your laboratory to die. Okay. So if you are a mentor and you have many people under you working in your lab, maybe just one person, maybe just two persons, begin to train those people working with you to be able to attract grants. So as a PI, most of the time, it's your duty to look for grants while the people working with you are focused on the work. They will be at the bench doing the work. But as the PI, you go out there to look for grants. You can work with them in the, in, the, in the laboratory, yes. You can put them through to write a portion of the proposal, yes. Together, they may even be the ones to who, who, who found the call. You may not see the call. It may be one of your students that saw the call. Like many of us as mentees, we see calls and we show to our mentors. And then our mentors say, yes, I think we can do it. The can-do spirit must be there. Because sometimes lethargy, lethargy may set in. Maybe saying, I, I open my mail, I see lots of rejection letters. Yes, you will win some, you will lose some. You don't want to sit on the rejection letters. You want to see how you can modify what was refused, what was rejected, and represent to make it better, and then you win. So you attract financial grants, and this term is typically used when you refer to that skill. So it becomes a skill. Some people win grants back to back. And some people, they get rejections back to back. So you have to look at who are those people who win grants? What are they doing right? What can you borrow from them? And then see how you can borrow leaves from them to, en to enhance your own uh, 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 percentage, your own ability to win and attract same grant or similar grant. So you develop these skills because they are necessary skills to secure peer-reviewed research funding. You have research, it is expensive, it has to be funded. You can't fund them out of pocket. Okay, so you have to find out how who are the people who can help you to fund your research. You can't do it alone, as we some of us already know. All right, so it's uh and when you lose or when your grant proposal was rejected, you don't uh get dejected. Yes, just brace up and then move on. Like if you lose at, at, at a spot or at a match or at a game. You want to be you want to be a bad loser, okay? Now, you can also refer to it in a broader field of fundraising for private foundations. But here we are targeting it for a research. I remember there was a conference I had to attend in Israel in 2017. It was a FEBS uh, conference, and I was glad that I was my 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 abstract was selected. But there was no grants attached to it to say travel grant to go. I had to do what I called crowdsourcing or crowdfunding. Uh, I, I, I hope I will be able to tell the story because I had a slide to, to allow me to say that uh, later on. So the grant proposal must be clear, must be direct. You know, today I don't want to go around uh, too many things. I, I want to go straight to it because of the title. The title needs to be direct. So when you're writing grants, you have to eat the grant running, go straight to the point. Okay, just introduce fairly lay the background, and then hit the nail on the head. Go clearly, make it direct, highlight, create a portion to, to, to explain what you want to do. 
So it is a direct document that is written to a specific organization. You don't write the same grant and throw, throw it around. You have to align it, design it to the specific organization or funding agency because you are trying to persuade the reviewers. Okay, usually there are reviewers. They will reach through and see is this thing within the scope of what we want to fund? Are we willing to put our money here? And you know, you you when you, when you put your money, your mouth will be there. So you put your mouth where your money is. So once they put their money on you to fund your research or your proposal, they have control at least to an extent to tell you what they wish, okay? How they want you to spend the money. At least they can ask questions. Tell us how you have spent the money. Give us a report, maybe three months or six months or annually. You want to give some report. Why? Because one, you have an important and thoroughly thought out plan to advance a valuable cause. So it has to be very clear from the beginning. This grant is to study uh, the, the impact of this traditional therapy to treat this disease. It has to be clear and you stay on course. So you don't want to go and do an assay that is not relevant to what you say you are studying. And they realize that this person has just read a lot and has seen different assays and is putting everything in there. No, this assay is relevant in this way. We study this in this organ. For example, if you're a biochemist, okay, we want to study the impact of drought on some plants. In what area? If it is a place where there is a lot of rainfall, then it won't be a good one. Yes, the proposal is nice, but you are going to study in an area that does not experience famine or drought or shortage of water. So why? So even if you are living in that area, you may be planning it for another arid area or an area where there is shortfall, shortfall of water. That means it talks about collaboration. Who do you have in that area? Make that work relevant. That area. You don't have anybody there. Mean that you are going to go and that area to do your study. All of you have to out. out. Do the second stage. I want to mute their microphone, please. And number two, you are responsible and you are capable of carrying out that plan. So if you do not, for example, you see some proposals and they say someone who has animal handling skills. You don't have animal handling skills and there's nobody in your collaboration team that has animal handling skills. Then they begin to ask questions. Cross the T's, dot the I's and say, this part, how do you intend to do it? If you don't have animal handling skills, how will you feed the animal, ad administer drug orally? How will you ingest subcutaneously? Will, it, will you be able to cross that, that point or that is where everything will end? So there are founders, there are investors, there are philanthropists, there are co-creators, because sometimes some research end up in, in, in business. We have some people who are focused in research to business, from bench to bedside, from lab to market. Okay, so there are people who want to put their money in such research work, and their focus and requirements differ. So you must study which call you are targeting and which call you are responding to, and then make sure you target it that way. I've said it, collaboration is key, and then we talk about professional networks. Professional networks, yes, because, okay, we are talking about science, we are talking about research, but do you know that sometimes some artisans can be very good for you, even though you are not going to list them on your proposal, but their knowledge of their kind of work they do, especially when you're into fabrication, okay? There are some grants, many grants, we require you to state how many people would you train on that grant. If you are just writing grants and you are not referring to how it affects your immediate environment, sometimes the grant may not fly. Sometimes you want to incorporate these days, they expect you to incorporate some SDG focus in your grant. There was a grant, there was a grant we were writing, and then we asked some reviewers to check for us before we submit. And they said, You are a university, you are writing this kind of proposal for a grant. But nowhere in your proposal did you include that. For example, secondary schools surrounding your university and even the undergraduates that you have will participate so that they can learn. What are they looking for? Knowledge transfer, skill transfer. How many people will be able to train on that research grant if you finally get it? So but many of us, we overlook this thing. And again, like I said, we shared it with some foreign partners and they read. Some of us, we write proposals. We keep the proposals to ourselves. You are not passing it to a colleague to check for you. You're not passing it to a superior to read for you. You're not sharing with your mentor to consider for you. 
the person may not add more than one line or one sentence, but that may be a game changer. Like I said, some people win grants back to back. And those people who win grants back, back to back, if you ask them to, they will tell you stories of those ones that they have failed to win. So back to professional network. This is the act of establishing and maintaining ties with other professionals in your sector. You on that team, you are all biochemists like I am. Whereas there are aspects where other people may come in. Okay, like the research grant we were talking about for our university at the university level, there was someone from engineering, electrical engineering, there was someone from agric engineering, there was someone from myself from biochemistry. Well, we added someone from computer because it's related, it's related to hey high. Okay, so you can just bring the same people. It has to be interdisciplinary. Some say multidisciplinary, some say yeah, intradisciplinary, but it's relief to say inter. Okay, inter means we're moving one into the other, not for the sake of this person is from this area, that person is from this area, and at the end of the day, they may not even participate in the work. You are not going to just do it for getting the grant. Yes, they must contribute. What will each person put in? What will be their input? What will be their participation? And when you are writing that grant, you already fulfilled one aspect ahead of when you get your result because you hope to be able to publish. And again, you have to indicate where will you communicate your findings. Would you attend conferences to communicate your findings? Will it be something that will be published in some newspaper to communicate your findings? Maybe it's for awareness or advocacy. Will you attend some COP COP twenty uh, eighteen meetings? We are. I mean, what journals? What what are the outlets that we go ahead to publish your findings? So all of these things are very key to make you to win grant. Again, we want to see balance. We we'll talk about it later. We talk about DEIB, diversity of that team, equity. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes, please. Yes, please. There's, uh, there's someone who is typing, which is very distracting. I don't know whether it's coming from which, which uh, I, I don't know who, but it, I it's kind of. I hope the person can listen to you right now. The is there. The person is there, Jai. The person can help us trace out who, who is um, from whoever the noise may be coming from, and please mute the person. All right, thank you. All right, so you have to establish uh, networks. Okay, you have to spread your tentacles, meet people. When you go for conferences, don't just sit alone. Meet people, talk, break the height. Don't wait for people to come over to talk to you. Why can't you go ahead and talk to people too? When you're watching people's uh, abstract or poster, during poster sessions, talk, engage them meaningfully, ask questions. When you meet over tea, during break, ask, you have cocktail, discuss. Exchange our cards. I've seen a lot of that happen to me before. I will talk about a few stories. I will mention a few stories later. So this is a crucial component for our career growth because it allows us to broaden our knowledge, our opportunities, our contact. Usually some grants will tell you you have to show evidence that you're already in contact with whoever, especially when it involves hosting, that whoever is going to host you, you have to show a... a, a an evidence that you have been in touch with that person, not because the deadline is tomorrow. And then you just quickly write. I had that experience with a, a professor in South Africa. Yes, I met her at the University of Ibadan during a conference that was organized by one of our professors, a mentor also, Professor Farumbi. So uh, they, in that meeting, I remember I met uh, another professor, Professor Adedeji, who came to speak. Okay, and I, our relationship together, I mean, with Professor Adeji has grown to places. Through that, and that of Professor Farumbi, I was trained on the use of Drosophila as a model for, for research, okay, economical model for research. Okay, there I met this professor, Professor Vanessa Stinkham. She will be in town uh, this in November for another conference for toxicologists and uh, drug, um, something like that, uh, Botox, I think that's a group. Okay, by uh, organized by Professor Farumbi and some others. All right, so I met her, we talked, we discussed, and then I told her, really, I, around that time, I had just started my PhD program. So I told her, you presented a fantastic uh, uh, topic, uh, and you talked about, we can reach out to you if we need anything. So I told her, and she said, oh, so sorry. On that visit, a mentor already spoke to her about his mentee, and she already agreed, yes, I will take, uh, take him uh, for three, three to six months, short visit in a lab. 
And she said, a lab is a small one. She cannot take an additional person at the time. Next time, let's look up. Okay. So after a few months, we kept talking. I realized, okay, she had a set of twins. Okay, I told her about, okay, I have a set of twins. I had a baby. Okay, also, we kept talking. We maintained that contact. And when the time came, I sent out something. I said, oh. And then she was guiding me. She told me the need to tell her ahead before putting her name and details in a call. I made that mistake. I already put her name and then, then the, the link came and I had to let her know that ah, there was a link. Please help me fill this as a referee. I said, do you know that that time she was busy traveling up and down? She was not able to respond. If I had told her ahead, she would tell me I won't be available. Then I could look for another person. Unfortunately, that kind of grant would not allow me to change the referee. I hope you are looking at it now. So if you are applying, writing, to submit a grant, you have to do all this by grant check. Let the person you want to use as referee know ahead if they are going to be available. So since she could not write that uh, report for me, that recommendation letter for me, the deadline came and I could not change the referee, definitely you know the end. I missed the application. I couldn't submit. So as you are spreading oh, your thing, Dr. Ebenezer, sir. Dr. Ebenezer, yes, sir. Some of us said you are speaking too softly, sir. Please, can you please raise your voice, Peter? Thank you, sir. Oh, all right, all right. That's okay. All right, so you have to do all the background check. You have to find out who will be available. Okay, what kind of work do they do in their lab? Uh, will the work, will the work be, be possible? In that grant application, you have to say, where will you do what? Clearly, this person has the expertise for this, and they will be able to use their lab for that. All right? But if you don't have this collaboration, you have not brought in your contact, who will serve for that purpose? It becomes a problem. So it is one of the most time-worthy efforts. It takes time to build contact, but it's a worthy effort for finding funding for your research. Let's see quickly types of grants that can be applied for. This is not exhaustive, but these are just a few uh, list uh, um, examples of grants that I could quickly call up. We have research grants. So research grant is, there's a research I want to do here or I will do outside and I need money for it, okay? I have a proposal. If you find it fundable, you can release money and I will do it. We have equipment grant. For example, we have seeding labs. I have applied for seeding lab a several, I mean, a few times, but unfortunately I've not won it till now, okay? So those are the things. You apply, sometimes you get, sometimes you don't get, but there are equipment grants. Grants that can bring in equipment to your lab. There was one grant that was a travel grant for which I nominated a master's student in my department. And then it yielded an equipment given to every participant in that workshop. They paid their flight to attend the workshop. And then they gave them a 3D printed UC2 microscope that could be used for their research. So if you cost that microscope, they will tell you the worth. All right. Another case uh, in mind is sometimes they give donation of those equipment and they tell your organization or your university to pay certain money to handle the shipment. But the cost of those equipment, when they tell you, it will be so, so huge that the money you are going to pay for the shipment will be so little when compared. There can be book grants. So textbooks, sometimes they send you e-copies. And then they, they, or they give you money to buy or they give you the books donation. So in grants money, they tell you the worth. And then you can always list it as those kind of grants that you have won before. Then we have fellowship grants. My first fellowship grant was under TWAS and the World Academy of Science. It was a, uh, a sandwich uh, kind of fellowship that I was able to travel to India to do part of my PhD work. Okay, and they were paying me stipend, monthly stipend. All right, so when I got there, I realized that the money was not going to be enough, but my PI was willing to share some money with me from the other grant that he had to buy certain these, certain that, reagents and uh, chemicals to make me finish my work. So there can be fellowship grants defined maybe for one year, maybe for six months, maybe for two years. And sometimes you have to disclose when you are writing grants, you are supplying, applying for grants, that do you have any funding source, any other funding source, either you already have it in hand, for that same project, you have to disclose it. 
or you have applied or you hope that you will get, you have to disclose it so that they will allow, they will know that their own money is going to be added with another fund from somewhere else. And certain bodies, certain organizations don't like such things. So they want you to use only their money. But some of them know that the money will not be enough. So they allow you to say, you can as well attract other grants if you are able to. All right, so you have to state such things and disclose. Then we have conference, workshop, and seminar grants. I've won such one before to attend. Maybe it's a travel grant, yes, we can call it travel grant, to attend a conference. I belong to an association, the Africa uh, Clinical Chemist, Association of Clinical Chemists of Nigeria. I submitted an abstract and they selected it and they gave me a travel grant to attend that conference. And I was able to go. So when I write it down as one of the grants I've won before, it's a $200 grant. Someone may say $200. I'm still coming there. Some people feel that that money is small. I've written a proposal with a, a younger, a junior colleague before. Say why? He said, uh, how much is uh, was it $2,000 or $5,000? Say, I don't want that kind of grant, $5,000. And then they'll be running after me to give report after six months. The money is not going to be enough, they know, and they don't want me to combine with uh, with another grant application, hoping maybe I can, I can, I can beef it up and add to it. Say, oh God, please, I will just uh, write that aspect for you, but please, I'm not interested. Uh, well, at the end of the day, I didn't get the, the, I didn't win the grant. But what am I, what's the lesson there? Some people feel this grant is too small. The grant money is too little. So they are eyeing for bigger grant. But another lesson is this. I have applied for a grant of 50 million naira before. And then they ask, they look at my itinerary, my, my, my story. I've not handled that kind of money before at that time. And I was uh, a fresh, I think I was still an L2. So, but the proposal was good. The proposal was huge, justified. They now say, well, you can't just jump to pick a 500 million grant at that your level. So they advised me, reduce it, go for a lower grant. And I went for a 2 million naira grant, which I won. And I was able to execute the project. So don't look at, hmm, this is too small. I don't want that. I want to go to the high one, like all our fathers, eh, all the professors. If you can form a team, collaborate with them, you can win that grant. And you can lay it to your name and say, yes, we have won a grant this much before. No problem. But at least don't despise little, little grants also. I won a grant of 60 pounds during the lockdown. And the focus of that grant was to train girl children, girl students, 12 of them we identified. And they made a condition. The person who will be the lead to submit that grant must be an alumnus of that organization because they have some, like we have a GMCP, they have some, some people they trained in that organization. So someone who has been trained before by them, who is a lady, is the one whose name must be on the submission. But I saw the call. So what did I do? I know someone in my department who has gone for the training before and a lady, then I called on her. Then we formed a team with other people and we executed it. It was a training grant. For example, I said to organize boot camps, to train 12 young girls. And we trained them in STEM. Okay, 60 pounds, very small. And even we found out that the story was people who are also trained by the organization before, like six of them came together, they are abroad, and they, donate, they donated 10, 10 pounds making 60. For them, it is a little way for them to give back. So there are small grants, there are miniature grants, but at least when you convert it to Naira, you can still execute something. So we're able to buy Foldscope, the paper microscope origami, and we train them. One of us had a small 3D printer. We were able to buy filament, and then we printed. We taught them coding, taught them robotics, taught them this and that, and we executed it. I can list this as a grant that I have won before. Because sometimes when you are applying, you want to see a list, how you have won some grants before and how well you are able to execute. I've talked about writing uh, travel grant. Now writing grant. Sometimes they give you money and then sometimes you travel or to assess certain libraries without traveling. There are e-libraries that you can enter from wherever you are in Africa or wherever in the world. You can have access to the library in Harvard and have access to the library in MIT and they give you that, they, sometimes they give you the money, sometimes they tell you the worth in dollars or the worth in whatever currency. 
it's a grant that you can lay claim up. I attended a course by grant. Did they give me the money? No. But if I was to I were to apply to that grant, I think it would cost me like 650 euros. And they gave me a letter to say, we are awarding you this uh, grant to attend this course. And I went through it. It was a course on advanced materials and, uh, and I think uh, additive manufacturing, something like that, which I coveted because I wanted it for uh, my 3D bioprinting program that I'm, I'm, I'm having in mind. Okay, now regularly that association will send me and say, you have a grant of $500 maybe up to, the, up to December 2024, to attend any of our conferences. So I have to, if I want to use such a grant, I have to look at which of the conferences will pay me that if I had a little more from my pocket, okay, I can make use of it. There are language grants too. Before, okay, let me join writing grants and language grants. The Alexander Von Umboldt provides such a thing. Certain times, some people are writing their final project in PhD and they provide them with such grants to assess a library in Germany, and they go over there, they use it and write. One of our professors in Ibadan won such a grant, and she was to write on a project on Yoruba language. She got there and she was surprised to see books, Yoruba books, historical books, books that she could not assess for a PhD here in Nigeria. She found them in one of the libraries in Germany because of the grant she won, and was able to write a very meaningful and robust thesis. So large grade grants sometimes when you relocate, this is usually like that, or sometimes when you're applying for, for study abroad, certain times you win some grant. One of our former students here in Biochemistry Union won such a grant, and he was, he, was, he was able to pay to write the professional exam, language proficiency exam. And now he passed, and he's, he was able to now win a, a fellowship to study his PhD in the USA. So there are many types of grants. Now, how do you draft the proposal? to attach, attract such grants. Before you start a proposal, you need to do the following. Maybe not in a particular order. I have said it before, but just for emphasis, you need to create a detailed, meaningful, actionable plan for what you want. A question, a research question, and then what answers do you want to provide? You have to make it detailed, what you want to do, and then provide details, provide references, site references, Build up that story. It is evidential storytelling. You have to be able to tell your story. Okay, how would you? How, how did you come about it? What is the research question? What made you interested in it? And what are the solutions you want to prefer? Why do you want to do it? And what are the expected outcomes? What would you gain if you finally finish this project and you get the expected answers? What will be the contribution, either to knowledge or to livelihood? in real times. Then you have to think about how your plan will produce positive results. For example, that grant to train young girls, we have to provide what will be the measurable result. The girls, how do, are we going to select them? What will be the selection criteria? From which town? From how many towns? How many girls? We said 12. Okay, why would you choose these 12 and not these other 12? So you have to say, these are the ways we want to go about it to select or do you want to just do it on first come first serve basis? Okay, we want to see uh, the waterways that are being polluted. If you do this research, this will be the things and things that will be exposed. And these are the ways we go about it for advocacy so that you can stop the pollution affecting the water. What is the problem? This water is the main source of water for people, for drinking, the way to affect their head, for, for cleaning, this and that. You have to establish all of those things. And what is wrong with the water? What are the sources of pollution? We have to raise questions. And as we are answering those questions, you realize that you're already building a proposal. So you have to look at it, not too detailed, at least go straight to the point. You don't want to put in too much confounding principles or ideology. So you, you, you don't want to just be all over the place. Otherwise, the granting agent will be confused. And like, this person does not know what he wants to do or there are like four proposals in this single one. You want to do this, you want to do that, you want to do that, streamline it and make it concise. Then you have to investigate the group that wants to fund you. Know their mission and make sure it's compatible with yours. It's better to use their own words. You will see their words in the call. What are they interested in? What do they want to fund? 
why do they want to fund it? If you write your proposal using their words, it's easy for them to read their words and understand. But you are picking your own words, and especially you are from Africa, sometimes they don't even understand your thoughts, your thinking pattern. And after writing, sometimes you have to submit it to check for English correction, okay? And then make sure everything is fine and balanced. Then examine sample proposals from your department who has won it before in your university. And again, if you have that kind of information, you should be able to refer to it. So you are not just the first person coming out of the blues to win such a thing. Then that organization itself, sometimes they publish it on their website to see past winners. You see the kind of proposal they submitted. I saw one grant, one call for an industrial postdoc some time ago under this European uh, Marie Curie Fund. And what they are after is whoever goes for such a postdoctoral training, you must end up producing a marketable product. It's, an, it's a proposal for bench uh, research to market. Research to market. So your proposal must be designed in such a way you want to produce something. Is for innovation and production, productive innovation. So find their standard and design it as such. All right, so we go on. Uh, I chose these pictures to let you know that it's not just white people that do research. Sometimes we want to announce a call, want to do a poster for an African background, and all you see is white pictures. And you are wondering, when I get to that lab, will I find white people there? So if you are talking to us to find a sustainable research, a thriving research career, winning grants, we should show examples of our own people who have won such grants, our own people having our own kind of skin color, so that we don't want to hope that uh, it's only the white people that can do it. Yes, some of them may send us donations of equipment and this and that, but we know how to use them. So we have people who are trailblazing in this area. And some of them have formed their own personal labs. Such a lab is the Droso Research and Training Lab of uh, Dr. Amos Abolaji in Ibadan. Okay, I'm still going to talk a little bit in that regard. All right, so we can train, train in real times, hands on things that are visible. And to sustain such lab, to buy uh, consumables and all, we can keep applying to get money. Now, grant management, application, and planning. It may be in any name or whatever form. But when you are applying for grants, you have to be sure that the number of words they are in accordance with where you want to paste them. Why did I say so? There are platforms that they use already now. Gone are the days that sometimes they ask you to make paper submission. Even for the paper submission in the PDF, you see word limit. You may print it out, yes. So sometimes some of us will just keep writing, 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 writing. And when we get there, we realize that we have written too, too much words. To now streamline them to the, to the word limit becomes difficult. So before writing, go ahead and check. Whatever I write, I'm going to put it in this box. And this is the number of words that are expected within that box. Then do, that's why you cannot beat around the bush. You have to be concise and straight to the point. So apart from the platforms where you do your application and you do your submission, you have to also prepare all the things you want to upload. I had an experience with uh, Africa, what's it called? Africa Research something something in 20, during the lockdown also. Because of time zone, which is very important. You have to check the time zone. Which country are you? I was in Argentina. The grant uh, agency situated in Italy. I am a Nigerian. So I'll be thinking in three zones. So what happened was I delayed a little. I have had all the things I wanted to submit, but one of the reference letters came in late. One of the reference letters came in late. So at that moment, because of the anxiety and all, I had to quickly dress up for my children and get them ready for school. My wife was not uh, around. She had to go do something. I was thinking in my Nigerian mind, using the Nigerian time zone. I thought, yes, I think I had like two hours. Okay, let me just quickly attend to these children and I go back to what I wanted to do. I was in Argentina. <laughs> The time zone for submission is Italy. And I was using Nigerian time to think. I finished everything. I sat down. Now, by that time, the, the letter came from the last referee. I attached it. I wanted to attach it. And then so everything was already there. Just to attach the last one and submit. I checked in and said, it closed one hour ago. I almost cried. 
I was like, what? One hour ago? So you have to check the time, the deadline. It's even better to submit ahead. So we don't wait till the last point. So when you want to reach out for to someone for a referee letter, reach out on time also. Don't wait and say, ah, I should be, is that man, we do it. Like I told you, someone was going to be traveling around, we don't have time for me, and I already put her name and details that, hey, she will be the referee. So it may not work like that. All right. Then again, after you win such grant, they still have platforms to help grant winners to make the best or most use of their grant fund, facilitating smooth reporting process. They send reminder, three months, okay, you're three months into your grant, you're six months into your grant, write this report. Because sometimes if you don't submit such report, you will not re receive the next tranche. It won't be released to you to continue your work. Meanwhile, you want it to be sustainable. You don't want your students to come around and say, we don't have this, this, we don't have that reagent. And, and all you can say is there's no money for it. There is a grant, a, an equipment you want to buy and the money is going to be released from there. You have to now send. Yes, you have the money for send and say for the release of so, 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 so. Sometimes you are going to be someone who is planning a, a conference and they have released the money, but you have to write some reports step by step, stage by stage, periodically till the lifespan of that grant. Uh, is over. So to facilitate smooth reporting process, they also offer measurable monitoring, evaluation, certain approvals, and reporting functionalities. All right. Uh, like two, three slides left. I want to talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Certain times they look for these things. The, the reviewers, they look for these things. If this is not there, it's something that is just brought up of recent, maybe two, three, four years, and let's say four years ago. They want to see the diversity. If you are writing a proposal and you're only focusing on Southwest of Nigeria, and it's a proposal that is requested for from the national le level, and you're only focusing on Southwest, if you can justify it, fine. Yet, even if it's going to be, in, let's say for a Greek now, you want to look at certain crops. You want to provide a machine or you want to provide kind of a pesticide, but it's going to affect crops. Why not pick three important crops or four important crops, but don't localize all the crops to yourself. You may have it in, in your area, but let it be certain crops that, that can totally be available in the north, you can find it in the east, you can find it in your own area. Maybe you are from the south. Something that is going to be important. If you pick potato, you want to pick beans. If you pick beans, you want to pick maybe yam or sorghum. So at least find a little bit of balance. It doesn't look like uh, it's going to only benefit this region. What about this other region? Especially because the nature of that grant is a national kind of grant. Then who is your audience? The agency you are writing to. You can pick their brains, can enter their mind and look at what are the kind of people that will be reading, reading this. I applied for one research grant in the Swedish, uh, in, in, Swede, in Sweden. And I was writing, I was writing, I was trying to describe something on the uh, uh, periodontitis. Okay. So I was describing it. I just said, well, yes, that can affect everybody. It's not only something that affects the black. So we wrote in that regard. And then I needed someone who fits in medicine and specifically surgery. I found someone in plastic surgery. Okay. It was quite nice. Shared it with the professors. They said this was nice. They added something. They put certain things. We submitted. And then, well, we didn't get it. And they told us why we didn't get it. So we could use that to prepare for the next call. There was some, there was some short force. We did not show enough evidence that we could, and we, we could carry out such a thing or that we could harvest the number, the sample size of people affected by that uh, disease. And then what were the things we proposed to cure it? We only focused so much about the association between one other disease and that periodontitis as a function of uh, diabetic uh, complication. So foot ulcers will be checked, periodontitis will be checked. So there was a kind of disconnect along the line which they pointed out to us. So we want to see what are the particular expectations of that grant. You should find out from their website, the documents, people have submitted before and won. Then you have to establish your own credibility. Your proposal must be thorough, must be thorough. They must see the hard work that has gone into it not something that you just woke up over the night and you put together and submit. Then what are the similar grants that you have executed 
in the past. They will look, they will check you up. They will do background check on you. They will want to see this person applying. And every member of your team, they want to see, check background. What is their area? What is their focus? What have they done? Past publications, past grants. So you have to appropriately reference any past accomplishment that verify your ability to succeed and then your commitment to the project. Some people start project, they, they are not committed to it. And then they are running after you. The lifespan of this project life cycle is five years. In the fifth, fourth, fourth, second, or two, first or second year, you are already, you have lost steam. So who will complete the project? Many people competed for it, but they gave you, or they gave a few of you. And at the end of the day, half, halfway into the lifespan of the project, they can't find you anymore. So you want to see that your partnership, you have to outline them. The partnership you have built with complementary organization and individuals. You may not have all the equipment, but show that you can approach this place and you can do the assay. You can go here, you can do the assay. Then see the cost effectiveness also. And if you look through your grant and they see how much you are saying you will spend on travel, they can tell if this person is just going to travel. You just want to travel with their money. How much will you spend on equipment? If there is a low sidedness, you are spending too much on equipment. They tell you this is not an equipment grant. Or they realize that you don't, you don't even have anything on grant. Is it the same money that you want to use to buy equipment? Equipment that you have not used, you don't know how it will perform. And you think that this year, one year grant, a grant for one year project or six month project, you now buy those equipment and then they, they mess up, you give them excuse why you cannot finish. So all of those things. Sit, try to put yourself in the seat of the reviewer and then check. If they submit such a thing to me, where will you puncture it? Uh, then that leads us to the next point. It has to be logical. You have to clearly and logically present your plan. Ensure your proposal is logical. Divide them into predictable sessions as they are reading. Say, yes, it makes sense. It flows one into another makes sense and label them with clear headings, appropriate headings, then follow exactly the headings. Don't write one heading and you are writing something else under it. The content requirements established for the, by the granting agency are in their core. Follow it and be direct to the point. My personal outlook. My personal outlook is this. Some of us, we may set up laboratories. Some of us, we can set up laboratories and ask our mentors to be overseers for us. It Some of us, sense. in our own right, we can even set up laboratories. Hmm? And what are the resources we can leverage on it like to make that. it sustainable? In Nigeria, for example, other places we have. So they can come, short time, three months, six months, something one year. They will come to learn, but they help you drive your lab. You may not have the money to be paying everybody, everybody that will be working in the lab. But as they are coming to do their work, they are learning. At that level, they don't need papers. They don't need research papers. They will, if they want to publish, by the time they do their projects in their schools, their institutions, they can publish with their, with their supervisors. And then we have those people on NYSC. They have finished... In Nigeria too, anyway, the National Youth uh, Service Corps scheme for one year. Some of them are looking for where to be posted. Check their background. Does he, is this is background suitable for the kind of thing you do in your research lab? You can take them. If it's a university, let them apply through the registry and ask that we need this kind of purpose. And when they come, don't just keep using them for secretarial jobs only, because sometimes they are good for that anyway. But let them be able to see the mini in the kind of uh, certificate they already have. Engage them, all right, and let them participate. Then it keeps your laboratory open 24-7. When the students are on break, it's not that, okay, your lab is also closed. You know, there are some universities that they don't have postgraduate programs already. If you are having a private lab, I told some of my students, your parents may be able to afford building a flat for you. Maybe two of you come together, three of you come together, ask your parents to build something for you. That doesn't stop you from doing eight to eight to four jobs sometimes. And sometimes we just decide that this is what we want to do with our life after school. 
then look for people who are certified to just do the paperwork, form a board of trustees, for example, if you need, register it, okay, and then start work. Okay, even if you don't register it yet, start somewhere. Then we have BSc projects, usually by standard, for me, within three months, most BSc projects are completed. Within six months, most MSc projects may be completed. With focus one year, PhD projects are completed. There are some people who want to doctoral experience. You want to experience something outside of the main area where they got their PhD. You, they may not have to travel, necessarily have to travel abroad or out of their countries. They know an establishment that does such a thing. Some of them have their monies. By the time you contribute these monies, it may be useful so that day by day, your, your, your lab is open from time to time. There was a grant one of my colleagues wanted to apply to, and they were asking for evidence of the grant he, she has handled from time to time. Then she wrote some, and then she was considering what test do I write, what test do I write, the kind of money she wanted to assess. I have to show that I have handled money and uh, managed them well. I just told her, one of the insights I brought when I went for my postdoc is this. Every student that go pass through you, you know abroad, the monies come based per student. If you have 20 students in your department as the chair, they know how much they should send to that your department to support research. So why can't you look at it? Every year we give you 10 students for project, five students for project. How much do they contribute? Let's say 20, 20,000, let's say 50, 50,000. And there were 10 of them, 10 times 50. For that session, you have handled 500,000 there. It's a grant. It's not your money. You did not collect it from them. But they used it to execute a project which they defended and with which they were able to get certificate upon graduation. And then some of them published this work. So not every time we will write this project, ongoing project, nature, self-sponsored. That project, ongoing project, nature, self-sponsored. The money came from somewhere. So if how much of money came to the student, even if you had it from your own purse or your pocket to it, calculate it every year. If you list those ones out, it can enhance your chances of winning that proposal you have been applying for and you are not getting, or the one you are writing right now. All right, so people who are graduates, our graduates, you can set up something like that. You have had some skills to do certain things, then have board of trustees from your mentors. Please guide us. This is what we want to do. By the time you are saying you have had your lab for two years, three years, four years, five years, you are building credibility. And then by the time you approach financiers, some of them are venture capitalists. Some of them are angel investors. Those kind of people, they are like philanthropists. They just tell you, what is the problem? This is the problem. Solve it. Here is the money. Go ahead and do it. And what you are looking for is fun because research is expensive and you cannot be doing it from your pocket. So with all these things, I hope that uh, I, we can build sustainable uh, research. We can make our research career a thriving one. Why we keep applying for different grants everywhere, outside the country, within the country, national level. Some institution grants are also there. Please let us leverage them. Let's look out for calls. Let's search. Let's find out. Let's look for those bodies. Let's see all the societies and associations that are professional uh, societies that we belong to. What are the things they offer? For example, now there will be an exhibition by the National Nigerian Society for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. So if you have a, one research to business innovation or something that you have created, for example, you go there, you may win something, you'll be awarded, and that money they will expect that you push forward the thing that you are, that you are doing. So thank you for having me. All right, uh, the personal experiences, I think I have mixed them up in my talk. My first research was a sandwich one, which I went to India. I went back the second time using the tertiary education trust fund here in Nigeria. Those are fellowships that I have won. And when I went to Germany, I think, um, yeah, it was self-sponsored more or less. I had to save up for my salary. That of South Africa was something I won under the International Federation of uh, Clinical Chemists. And I started by joining the um, Association for Clinical Chemists of Nigeria. And then we have the Africa Federation of Clinical Chemists and we have the International of clinical chemistry. So I won a travel grant to go for a conference in Lagos in, here in Nigeria and later on for another conference in South Africa and they paid. It was a very nice uh, exposure for me. That of Israel was a source, a crowdsourcing, a crowdfunding that a lady that I've never met, uh, 
I started training Taekwondo when I was in India. My master then, and this lady was friends. She's in the US. We've never met. We only interact on Facebook. I posted it that I needed support for my travel to present at the Feb's conference. And uh, she was the first person that responded and sent me $100. I think that was 2017. And then some other people, old friends from secondary school, 10,000 here, 20,000 here. What I had was very miaga, like one and something thousand. The money was complete and I was able to go. I was able to attend. So that's a kind of funding also. And then Argentina, I reached out since I won towards grant before. I saw a, a towards application for three months. I reached out to the list of possible hosts and uh, two of them responded out of uh, the five or so that I, I, I approached. One of them said three months, I couldn't achieve anything, but there will be a grant uh, national level, Argentina. They in, invite people from outside of Argentina. When it opens, she would call me. The second one said, yes, I will take you. And then she gave me uh, details for those three months. I applied, I was not selected. But the other one that promised to say, the thing you sent to me, I like it, she remembered. When the call came out, she sent to me, I never met any one of them before. But she sent, she remembered that mail. I said, are you still interested? Now the call is out. Prepare your proposal. This is the topic that we are working on. And I did it. She translated it from Spanish to English. I did all I could do, send it back to her. She added a few things. She guided me through it. And then I was selected. But the lady who wanted to host me for the three months, but because TWAS did not grant me for that association fellowship, I reached out to her because of my student, one of my students. And she said, if she's going to come for five years PhD, I will take her. And that one also put in for the same call for PhD candidate. And then she went. She's rounding up her program now in Argentina. I went for two years, COVID made it three years. I came back home. She stayed back at least to finish her PhD. So it's the power of network, professional network, writing grants. Don't keep it to yourself. Share with, with people. Let them uh, judge it, do peer review for you, levels of review before the grant owner will do their own review. Uh, I hope that I have been able to share my thoughts and how we can make our research career thriving and sustainable. It's a journey. I'm not there yet. Many people are still on that journey, but there are people who are there who are doing very well and there are nice examples that we can follow and we can find encouragement following in their footsteps. I want to pay respect to all my mentors and professors. I'm happy for what they have poured into my life and I'm glad that uh, I'm trying my best to make use of those things and passing the debating across to other mentees that are coming up on them. Thank you again to AGMCP for this privilege and to image this initiative to share with you again. Thank you and God bless. I think you are muted. I can't hear you. Dr. Grace, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay, so I said, can we um, put emojis to say thank you to Dr. Ebenezer? Thank you so much. You exhausted the topic. So I'm going to open um, the floor for questions. If you have questions, please, you can type it in the chat or I can allow you to talk before I make my own contributions. I don't know how to make myself the host. Any questions? Any questions? Ask questions now, or you have him with you. I know that for the course of this uh, mentoring program, there has been different calls. Um, Dr. Laide has encouraged everyone, both mentors and mentees, 
to apply for different calls and different and different types of grants. Okay, so hearing Dr. Ebenezer's um, experience, personal experience, if you have any question you want to ask or any contribution, please make it now. Okay, Margaret. All right, thank you so much for the great presentation and for my mentor. And um, I would like actually to ask, um, since of course I'm based in Kenya and I know it's a bit different in Nigeria, but for someone who is just starting out, like you're doing your PhD and you're just uh, maybe uh, assisting as a assistant lecturer, you're not really permanently in that institute, maybe how to go about, because I, from, from what I see is uh, most of the grants want you to be attached in an institution and kind of have um, a, like a, a job there, but, but for the part-time lecturing, they don't really, the school doesn't even know you exist. It's just the department that knows. So maybe how do we start out at that small level, even as we wait for the bigger things? And the other thing I wanted to request is, can you share some of the simplified maybe proposals that you've won grants with that we can actually go look at them? Even, of course, I know we have different fields, but it'd be nice to see maybe how long they are or how they look like. Thank you. All right. Um, nice to hear from you, Margaret. So um, many times people start doing PhD elsewhere and uh, yeah. they are not really recognized, they are not staffed there. But we should not forget that they have supervisors. So if you find a call and you wish to respond to that call, depending on your rapport with your supervisor, your supervisor would see that it will not in any way be a conflict with the program we are running. I would advise that usually such a call should tally to make to push your ongoing PhD or whatever research you are running forward. So if it is in line with what you are doing, definitely your supervisor would not object to it. So you should use the pedestal of your supervisor to win that grant. Okay, so I think that's the way to go. Um, I think did I answer that? Yes, you did. You did. Thank okay. you. Then for the kind of grants that I won before, I've not won many grants yet, except for the one I I have research students every year. I've been having that on um, on ending supply since 2009 that I became uh, a lecturer here as an assistant lecturer rising through the ranks. So there have been moments that I supervise 10, 20, depending on how many of us would be available within this session. So such monies added together, for me, I pride it as grants that I have won, that I'm able to supervise. So it's an evidence that I am doing something and I can show result of the publication. So that's one. That being said, beginning my PhD, my own, my own state pushed me forward by saying, yes, we have won uh, an indigenous PhD award for three years. So it was that money that I used to begin my PhD, which I enjoyed for one year. Politics overtook took it. I went the second year to say, I've completed one year, I've made progress. Please, can I get money for second year? And they said, let others enjoy. Okay. So the hope was almost dashed and I was feeling like, ah, I thought this was to be for three years. So I didn't enjoy it beyond the first one, which was paid. It was uh, 500,000 naira. So I went on my PhD, which ended up. Job. I got the fellowship 2008. I got the job 2009. So I was from my salary and from help from family taking loans here and there, I was able to finish. Okay, 2010, I got that fellowship, Third World uh, Academy of Science. 
to go to India for one year. So I did my bench work and I came back. And I came back, I have not completed what I was doing. My supervisor advised again if I could go back to India. So I applied for a tight fund and after a year, it came back. So I came home, stayed one year, went back to India for one other year, another year. Okay, so making like three fellowships that I think I have won. And then I didn't win another one until my postdoc in, I won in 2017, went 2018, came back 2021. So it ended up becoming three years. It was a two year fellowship, yes, but because of COVID lockdown, they extended it by one more year. But then the last year was out of the lab. We only extended it to give us money to survive the one year lockdown because it lasted that long, even longer than that. That is all. PhD, 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 and a postdoc. The other kind of uh, award I have won would be to train other people, train a few girls. That was in 2020. I won some travel award to attend conferences and present my research. Uh, yeah, to attend conference. Then I've attended, I've gotten another award to, yeah, workshop training, workshop training. Then the other award I won was institution grant. That fund controlled is supposed to my university, and that was a two million naira grant I won in 2016. Uh, so I've not really won many awards. There was a time I had to delete lots of uh, rejection uh, notices when they tell you it was a stiff competition. They will even tell you the number of people that applied, and they will tell you you really tried. Sometimes they will say for lack of funding. That was why they put it. Yeah, so I've won some, another award again for a course. I think I mentioned that to so attend a course because the Sweden based uh, uh, organization. So I attended the course virtually, actually. And uh, yeah, but then I keep applying, I keep joining other teams, having collaboration, pushing it out. So that's the research kind of life. But then we should be able to use the grant we have very well. Yeah. be able to see this is what I used it for. This is a student that was trained on this grant. We produce this number of PhDs, produce this number of MSCs, this number of BSCs. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it would be nice to see the samples of what those that you've applied and gotten. Like, that's what I was requesting. Like, like the kind this. of proposal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you could share with us. I'll out here right now. I have to uh, run through uh, my own. And probably see if I still have them on this laptop. No, these okay. are like uh, the latest one I talked about was 2017, mm. and this is 2023. So I have yeah. to rush to go through my mail to see those kind of things. Okay. But basically, some they are like similar, similar, similar. If it is a research grant you are applying for, you have a topic, you have the justification. They have some future features that follow. If it is something to train other people, you have to justify how many people, how do you want to find them, put them together, what will be the learning outcomes, and then what will be the feedback. Because we have to gather feedback from those uh, 12 girls, and then we have to make a broke, a little broke here to publish what we have. Yeah. Then even when we get invitation to come and train people in STEM, the person funding it. We had one for two weeks ago in a nearby city, and we trained them for two days. So, but that one is not like you have to apply. They only reach out to us to say, we know you train people in STEM. We want to, to come around, train, give us uh, your, what's it called, estimates and all those stuff. So that one is becoming something we do under our NGO, Science and Education Outreach. So of course they have to pay for our hotel accommodation, sometimes our travel, feeding, and sometimes they honor us with uh, honorarium to come back. You know, and such monies can money buy something little for my lab here and there yeah so thank you thank you, thank you. um ahmed abby i can see your hand up <clears throat> yes um thank you so much brother jay uh it was uh really um Amen. <laughs> uh very in, <laughs> very insight is uh insight is uh what weapon and i got a lot of um uh, knowledge. Um, when it comes to um, uh, early career, sometimes uh, 
they uh, face the problem regarding to when they are addressing a specific problems, like um, they uh, go with a, a, a very large or maybe a very wide problem that uh, can uh, make them decline their uh, application. So I was just uh, wondering, like, um, can you give um, insights, like uh, what strategies or maybe uh, approaches uh, we can address like those problems? Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Sometimes when you uh, approach a large problem, maybe too large for your level or too ambitious, am I right? And uh, for that yes, yes, bro. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's why I said you have a research question. Let's make an example of what happens when our PhD students present their proposal. One of the things we ask under budget, when we when they had everything up and it's going to like uh, five million naira, and we ask them, where do you think you want to raise this money from? Then we ask questions. Why do you want to go this elaborate? Why do you want to check this organ, that organ, this organ, this uh, histopathology, immunochemistry? These are maybe very nice, but are they really necessary for this research topic? You know, so we don't want to do too much. Then you have to look at how much is going to be given for the grant, and you tailor it to that. So sometimes if you have a big bogus research, you can streamline it. So you can say it's a part of the bigger work. For example, just like when I won my first uh, award for the World Academy of Sciences, and I got to the Institute, National Institute of Pharmaceutical and Education Research in India, the ethical committee called me and asked to speak to my proposal. And one of the questions they asked, was this you are going to deal with diabetes or you want to check what happens to the mitochondria permeabilization of the liver in the diabetic rat? why the liver okay the interest was to see how the liver responds being the first uh, point of detoxification okay but then they were saying but you are talking about diabetes so they advise look into the kidney look into the other organs, if possible, the pancreas, and probably check the brain. If you are not ready to do that, we will not approve this and you won't go on with your research. Then they ask other questions. Why do you want to use this number of animals? I think my first number of animals was like uh, 60 or 90, I don't remember. I had to bring it down to 45. And they were asking me also, if you find someone who has done something similar to what you have proposed, can you jump jump on that kind of group to use the same uh, the same set of animals? Why? You are trying to reduce the number of rats that I would use. Then they said, if it's only the liver you want to excise to work on in this number of animals, you can't do it here. I had to phone my professor and ask, tell him. Then he said, okay, I give you clearance. Go ahead and add some other organs and check the mitochondria familiarization. And that was how I was able to answer such questions. One, they were not the people who gave me the grant. I already had the grant. But they still could start resources, despite the fact you brought in some money. So they asked those questions. So if you have a very big project, you can cut them into parts. For this grant that you are going to give me 5,000 US dollars, this is what I want to look at. But you know in your mind, assuming you had something like 200,000 US dollars, you do something bigger than that. Some of us will now fill the rest of the grant money with saying we buy this equipment, we buy that equipment, we travel to this conference, we travel to that conference, and then we say we train this MSC, number of MSC students, train this number of PhD students, if that one becomes too much compared to the real work you will do, the amount you will spend to, for the real work, they won't approve. They won't. So we have to balance things. Balance. Then if you are forming a team, they want to say how many women, how many men, uh, what is the distribution of uh, the, the research 
expertise and specialization, area of specialization, and some other things. So those ways you can expand, but for the work, you have to be focused. That's why we call it research focused. You don't want to be everywhere. I had a story of someone who lives into a PhD defense, and the woman said in the USA where she came from, that single PhD oral uh, seminar, she could identify four or five PhDs in it. But usually in Nigeria, we want to put everything together and say, ah, if I'm going to get this kind of money, then I should be able to do this much. It's not about how wide, but the quality of the work, the nature of the work and the quality. So don't just load everything, all the assays that you have read about, just to justify for the number of kids, the number of these and that consumables that you will buy. I don't know if I answered your question. Uh, yes, Prof. G, you answered. Thank you so much. Thank you, too. Thank you. Do we still have any more questions? Okay, I think I just want to add um, one or two pointers. Um, you know, when we're applying for, just like um, Dr. Jai said, there are different types of grants. And when we're applying for grants, there's usually the criteria for the grants. One of the things to check for if you meet the criteria for grants. Other thing, uh, another thing is that some of the grants also have guidelines. You need to check the guidelines to be sure that you follow the guidelines properly. Thirdly, you need to also speak the language of your donor. They might just be expecting you to say one or two words. You need to speak what they want. Um, four is that um, I think that um, grant writing for those in research, even if you're not even in research, even if it's in the NGOs, you need to make grant writing a habit. No amount is too small, honestly. There's this ripple effect this grant does. You get one, it brings in another. You get like, that's how it does. You know, and then Definitely. another point, another point, Dr. Jai said was was on collaboration. This mentoring program, you've made friends. You're going to graduate. You're going to become an alumni. It's good that you keep in touch with both mentees and mentors. You just never can tell where the referral would come from. And before you know it, hey, this person recommends you. You get this travel grant. Another person you meet, you met network somewhere else like that. You know, and then when it comes to research, you can't actually do everything on your own. So just like you said, collaboration is key. Thank you. Um, Doctor, is Doctor Laide still here? So well, okay, over to you. I think um, this is already three thirty. Do you have anything you want to say before we close? Uh, no, please. Uh, I'm actually at another meeting. Uh, you can close now. Yes, I will follow up on the chat later. Thank you. Okay. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Please feel free to contact um, Dr. Jai privately or even any of your mentors in case you see grants that you think you want to apply for. Please feel free to communicate with others and collaborate. Thank you, Dr. Ajayi, for this um, wonderful talk. You really exhausted everything. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Ajayi has dropped his number on the chat. So um, let me even take the number down. Okay, so he has dropped his number. You can contact any one of us and let's see how we can collaborate. Thank you so much. And lastly, um, on the chat, on the WhatsApp group, they talked about filling the forms for all the mentees, the evaluation form. So if you haven't done it, please make sure you do it. Thank you and do have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a very wonderful morning.